Clarence Thomas, black Republican who believes in pulling yourself by your bootstraps, rather than, to me, understanding the systemic racism that African Americans face in this country and other minorities. He doesn't get it, neither does uh, Clarence. Right. And that's why they're Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hate it, man. White guilt is just so annoying. These white liberals, watching them try to relate to every minority is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for you. Oh my God, you're from Mexico? Ugh, I was just there for Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Talks with Ken here today, and you guys knew I was going to react to this. I just knew. My followers knew I was going to react to this video. So there's a clip out there with Joy Bay Hart, Mrs. Blackface out here, trying to, I guess, define what the black experience is. And in my view, it's, it's, just, it's just a tactic to pander to their, their perception of what the ma majority of black people think. And it could be very well be the case that a uh, majority of black Americans do think like what Joy Bay Hart says. But my problem with uh, this whole concept of like black conservatives aren't real black men or they don't understand the african-american experience is if racism targets you based on the color of your skin there's no way that systematically i'm somehow exempt from prosecution with from racism because when system when someone when people use the term systematic because personally that that word means a lot to me because of my where i work at when you do something by a system the system needs parameters it needs fields. It needs a criteria. And if you're saying systematic racism, I'm assuming the criteria is your race. And no matter how rich, how successful, doesn't matter if you come from an immigrant family, if you're black, you're supposed to face this prosecution. So in my argument here, if I find somebody that does not experience racism, can I, can I throw a dent in your systematic racism argument? How come he didn't experience racism? That's what the question should be about. Instead of saying, oh, systematic racism is everywhere, even though you can't tell me or show me an example of what is systematic racism, right? They, they don't go into no examples, no definitions. You're just supposed to take their word for it. Joy Behar sources for systematic uh, racism. Trust me, bruh. That, that, that's, that's the whole argument. That's our whole argument. At least when I say something, I give you a, an example of what I'm seeing or how I think about these things. She didn't tell you nothing. She just tell you the script. And this is how it comes across to me. And I think this is why I've always been pushed away from the Democratic Party because of my father. My father instilled in me, hey, man, you, you come, we come to this country to give you a better opportunity. That's premise one, why I believe the things that I believe. Because no, no white woman is going to sit here and tell me to think differently about oh, my experience or my beliefs or my culture. Because this is, this is the thing I, I've noticed with a lot of African-American men, and I don't mean all of you, but it's just based on my experience. Y'all got no sense of pride. That, that, that's what I noticed. That, that's what makes me not your kinfolk. Because I got pride. I got pride in my family. Like, I want to do my parents right by allowing, being, making me born in this country and giving me better opportunities than they had. I went, to, I went to Haiti. I went to visit where my parents grew up. I spent two weeks there. When I came back, I was crying because I saw water coming out of the faucet. That's real poverty. I, had, I, got, I got contrast. I got to compare America to another place. This is where my family's from. This is where they 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 came, met met in America, and I was born. I'll never trade it for the world. That made me appreciate America more. And I think a lot of Americans need to go outside the country. African Americans are less likely to travel out of the state too, compared to other groups of people. So they have a very limited experience. So they always compare America to perfection. And that comedian thing I put there is a perfect example of that. You're trying to relate to us. You're trying to relate to an imagination of what a black person is. And today, a black person is not what I'm trying to be is what I am, right? I'm born black. No one can take that away from me. Not even another black person. It, it don't even matter if the majority of the black people voted and said, Kenny ain't black. I'm still black. Because I'm born this way, right? Lady Gaga, I'm born this way. Not only, not only if you're black. They, make, they mix your race and your culture. They want to assume that just because you were born a black man, you share a certain experience. No. Racism exists. I agree. But only at a personal level. Structural racism, systematic racism, that shit don't exist. And if it does, point to me. Show it to me. Give me an example. All your examples are going to be in the past. And then I'm going to ask you. I already know all the arguments. Then I'm going to ask you, okay, how does that, that, that instance in the past affect you today? Is that law still being enforced today? No. 
Like, it, it's crazy. It seemed like most liberals, black liberals especially, they want you to judge America where it was, where it was now where it's at. What about America 2023? I don't care about America 18-something. All countries 18-something was practicing slavery. It wasn't just an American thing. But for some reason, they want to leave that out. They want to act like America was uh, the source of slavery or something. When slavery is a Slavic, uh, it has Slavic origins. White people enslaved white people. African people enslaved other African people. That's how y'all got here. Y'all was sold into slavery. Y'all ancestors were sold into slavery. You were just born in this country. And a lot of black Americans like to use the fact that, oh, uh, Kenny, your parents are immigrants. You don't really know what it means to be black. And I, I always fight back against that is because you never earned any of the rights you got either. Oh, it's because of us that you were able to come here and succeed in this country. No, it wasn't. It's because of me and my family. That's that's what we chose to be here. Right. And then I know I'm not going to sit here and get explained to by some rando in the comment section about how I I, I did I, I I benefited from their suffering. You didn't suffer either. Like, I'm tired of y'all right now, bro. It's, it's, it's getting ridiculous. And y'all going to back up this lady right here. Y'all ain't going to say nothing about her. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. This is my main problem with y'all black liberals. Because y'all sit here, say, oh, Kenny, you just speaking up with black white people. You let a white woman explain to you what uh, what what the black experience is, and because it coincides with your your ideology, you go, "Yup." But I'm the coon, right? Here, here's another coon shit. Fifty Cent originally in 2020 backed Donald Trump, right? Because he was worried about, "Damn, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be 20 cent if Biden gets in," because he wanted a 62 percent tax in New York. Then another white liberal. It seems like white women. I don't know what it is with y'all black men, but it seems like white women can get y'all to do anything, right? Char uh, Chance Lee Hander bullied 50 Cent into renouncing his support for Trump. She said, oh, no, he don't believe that. He's a black man. He can't vote Republican. Y'all for diversity and inclusion until it is, it's to become a, a Republican. I don't get y'all. Either y'all about diversity and inclusion in all things or y'all not about it at all. And this is my talk. This is my problem with diversity and inclusion. It's just it's just a it's a, just a smoke screen. You want everyone to look different, but think the exact same way about things. And this is why you get a Joy Behar feeling comfortable saying, yeah, they don't believe systematic racism exists. Who, how can I believe something that you can't show proof of? It's a boogeyman. It's a perception. It's an imagination. People suffer more from imagination than from reality. That, that's, that's, been, that's a model I, I stand by. Seneca. Stoicism. Now, I'm not going to believe just, oh, oh, take my word for it, bro. We bla I'm black just like you, bro. No, that's your experience. Because racism only affects people at a personal level. Gone are the days where racism is the uh, majority opinion in America. So why should I worry about that? The difference between a black liberal and a black conservative is black liberals worry about race first. Black conservatives worry about race last. That means I'm going to consider all the other options, then I'm going to consider racism. While you consider racism first. Oh, I didn't get the job because the dude was racist. Black conservatives don't get the job. Mm, I probably didn't have the right qualifications. I probably didn't do well in the interview. Uh, maybe I wasn't a right fit for them. Maybe they found a better candidate. A black conservative will go down the list before he'll, he'll consider racism. That's the difference. That's the main difference. And because I have the goal to think that I'm just as capable as anybody else in this country to be successful, that is why black conservatives are hated in this country. And I'll leave off with this quote. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. This is from Frederick Douglass. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Frederick Douglass. And I, that's, that's a model I live by and what I want to pass down to my children. It is easier to build strong children than to, repa than to repair broken people. Bars. Frederick Douglass. I live by that. Frederick Douglass admit that it's harder to change current people because people are stuck in their ways, right? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's easier to impression upon the, the, the next generation. Hey, you got you could do better than us. Hey, you got more opportunity than us. Hey, you, you face less obstacles than us. But instead, black people don't get this message. What we get handed down, and this is the real legacy of slavery that I always talk about. What you get, hand, what you get handed down is handicaps, mental handicaps. Oh, you can't do nothing in this country because you're a black kid. You're a black boy. You're a black girl. You're going to have it harder than everyone else when that's not actually true. That's not actually founded in reality. But, you know, that's the imagination you give your children. Um, this is why I'm so, um, that's why I'm so against uh, CRT. I'm never teaching that, I'm not going to curse, that BS to my kids. I'm never going to mentally handicap them. I'm going to tell them, hey, you can be anything in this country. All you got to do is have the skills, knowledge, and experience to do it. And you can do it 
one book at a time, one course at a time, one workout at a time, whatever you want to do, you put your mind to it, you can be successful. There's a reason why the NBA is 80% black. Did someone tell you, oh, you can't be you can't be the best basketball player in the world? A black person is more likely to tell another black kid you're more likely to be the best basketball player in the world than to tell them, hey, you're going to be the best doctor in the world, the best engineer in the world, the best president in the world. We black community. I don't know if it's the culture. I don't know if you let these white liberals uh, culture like uh, uh, condition your minds to push your kids a certain way. But there's only three things that's acceptable. Black, you be an athlete, rapper, entertainer, and politics. Anything that seems to be giving you fame and status, that's the only thing black people accept you to be. Unless you're a black woman, then you're you're free to chase ex uh, educational success. Black men reading at a third grade level, but then they will blow our, our, our men are not keeping up with us. Black women of this generation will complain. But then when I tell them, hey, majority of them are raised by single moms. So you bet you blame the previous generation of women uh, for raising their sons like that. But no, we don't want to look at ourselves. We want to blame everyone else. Like I said, y'all just looking for an alibi because it's, hard, it's easier to keep an alibi than to keep accomplishments. Because accomplishments, its rent is due every month. But hey, I digress. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree, disagree? I would like to hear your thoughts in the comment section. I appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.